Okay. Uh, hi everyone. So I will be uh, presenting Waltz, a testbed for reproducible wireless network experiments. So this is work done with uh, Pierre Bonichols, Etienne Dublé, who are here in the room. So they work at the lab with uh, me, Franck Rousseau, at uh, League. Yeah, of course. And tomorrow, <coughs> you can participate in a tutorial or hands-on session to use uh, this testbed. So what is the motivation for Walt? Actually, uh, there are special needs when we want to do experiments with wireless networks. Uh, simulations are not enough, we know that for a long time, and uh, spatial diversity is uh, fundamental. It means that we have to test the things we develop in different kinds of situations. So the idea here is that we want to be able to deploy easily test beds to run a uh, different kind of algorithm, routing, Mac, whatever, uh, in a different kind of situation. So there are large test beds that we use a lot. For example, uh, FIT IoT, which is in part uh, situated in Grenoble. But they are, uh, of course, very expensive. They have a limited hardware choice because the hardware is already in place. For, so you, you cannot choose, for example, your sensors. Here we can see open mode or the ST green mode we've been using in, in some projects. You don't have physical access uh, to debug, like for example, uh, hook uh, oscilloscopes or things like that to, to do uh, low level debugging. Uh, and you have to use a reservation system, so uh, obviously you cannot use it uh, whenever you want. You have to uh, go into the available slots. So we also did a lot of desktop experiments. It means that you just deploy things on your desktop and you run things like that, but it, of course, of <coughs> Obviously, sorry, it doesn't scale. It's a real pain to deploy. You have to do like this, uh, uh, flash the cards, uh, reboot the nodes, whatever. So when you have two nodes, it's okay. When you have 20, it's a bit more uh, difficult and it's not easily reproducible. Okay, you cannot give, for example, a reference in a paper so that someone reproduce the experiments you've been doing uh, on your platform. So the objectives are to design a lightweight ex experimentation platform that is easily extensible and reproducible and uh, <coughs> With the Walt nodes, they can be either uh, uh, controllers, so when we do experiments on wireless sensor networks, for example, the nodes, the Walt nodes, they control the sensor nodes, or we also use them as the, the nodes under, under experiment, under tests. So we have Raspberry Pis, and we run, for example, APs or uh, Wi-Fi wi clients to do mobility and things like that uh, experiments. So uh, what what is... <coughs> the platform like. Okay, so there are four different uh, elements. I will uh, go into more detail later, but we have a server that is driving the platform. We drive the platform from clients that are uh, uh, the, the users, the experimenters uh, laptop, for example, that has a remote access to the server on which we have a collection of Walt images. So these images are uh, OS images. They include everything that you need to boot one of the nodes and to run an experiment. And then we have a, a, a network of nodes. Okay, so we started with Raspberry Pi because uh, obviously they are very cheap and easy to use. Uh, so here you can see a switch, so we need a, a managed switch because we have to handle a few smart things like power over internet and VLANs. And we boot these, uh, these uh, nodes from images that are uh, on the server. They stay on the server. And these images, we can share them through Docker. So it means that you can give a link to someone of your image on Docker and you can get the image and if he has the same platform, you can just clone this image and rerun the same experiment. So this, uh, so why is it easy to do? Because the, the server is very easy to deploy. So we have an automated installation. You can just, for example, download an image. Uh, it's built with Debut Stick. So this is something Etienne has been doing and submitted to Debian, by the way. So you can use it yourself, then you can just plug the USB uh, stick in a computer, you turn it into either live boot or you just install the server and you're running it. It's run on any 64-bit computer, so we have Nux, we have a rack server, we have several instances of Walt, so it runs on a, uh, many different kind of uh, hardware. So here are, here are the um, references for uh, more details if you like to check that. 
So there's also an easy to install client. So all the, uh, most of the software and all the client part is in Python. So you just pip install wild client and you're done. Of course, you need internet connection. Uh, it's cross-platform. It runs on Linux, OS X, whatever. It connects to the server. So you have to configure a few things at the first time. So give the server uh, address or name. Uh, give your uh, Docker accounts if you want to use, uh, if you want to, to uh, clone or push images to the, to the Docker hub. And we have also developed, uh, so this is a not strictly related to platform, but we have developed a visualization plugin for Kuja. So that's something that we use to visualize what's happening in the network when we run uh, experiments using Quantique OS on sensor nodes. So uh, Kuja is actually an emulation uh, platform. So I will show it later, the interface. But you have a graphical view of the network. And you see the packets okay, with arrows. You see the, the, the network structure. So what we did, we did a plugin. And instead of emulating, Actually, we take the events that are happening in real time in the network and we feed them into Kuja and then we have the same behavior, but with a real uh, uh, experiment. And it's a very lightweight infrastructure. So we use managed switch with uh, power over Ethernet. So that's needed because we don't want to reboot nodes when we crash something. Okay. So the idea here is that we just switch off and back on and we, we reboot. So the nodes do not need external power, we just need uh, Ethernet connection to the node. <coughs> so that's the management network that we use to uh, boot, deploy the, the, the experiments. So uh, right now we have Raspberry Pi B and B+, but we also uh, are working on uh, supporting Raspberry Pi 2, uh, Udo's and things like that. So the, if you want more technical information, you can come tomorrow at the on-zone session, but the, the idea is that we do not uh, put anything on the uh, SD card of the of the node, so we know that's uh, the, a very uh, uh, sensitive uh, uh, equipment. The SD card, if you write too much on that, it will fail very quickly. So we only have a, a bootloader that is based on Linux, and uh, we boot remotely from a shared image uh, through the management network, where we get the kernel, we get. Uh, uh, configuration options from the from the HTTP, etc., and then we we boot uh, remotely uh, the devices. So it's very easy because you can just modify the image on the server. You can reboot the image, and then you rerun your experiment with uh, with a new version. <coughs> so it's quite versatile platform because you can use you can use it just like a desktop uh, platform. You, you, we have several small size deployments, so you use that. To debug, for example, or to, to make mobile demos. It fits in a, in a suitcase. And you go to a conference and you can run your demo. Uh, it's easy to flash several nodes. It's, it's very easy to rerun always the same thing. So if you want to test that the modification you've made, for example, are uh, still uh, working, it's very easy. You can do some kind of continuous integration, you know, just like make tests uh, before committing to just check that everything uh, is still running OK. At, but you can also make larger deployments. So that's what we have in the lab also right now, several tens of nodes. So we only need Ethernet for control. So what we did, we hijacked uh, Ethernet uh, from different offices, and we just put our nodes here. So we use the wall uh, con connections. We grab everything back in the <coughs> in the computer room, and then we put the the server and the switches over there, and we can uh, control the nodes that are uh, in the lab uh, at the league. I mean, in one building. <coughs> okay, that's it for the the hardware part, the platform. And now, how do you want to uh, reproduce experiments? So the idea is that. To reproduce experiments, we want to rerun uh, the same experiments in different situations. And here we focus really on uh, rerunning the same experiment in a different location. The idea is that if you run something in your lab and someone wants to compare or improve what you did, the first thing that you want to do in this case usually is to rerun what they did to uh, make sure that you have the same results and to, to, to have a starting point that is uh, uh, sound. So the idea here is to package everything in Docker images. It's very easy to build, to uh, modify. You just clone the image, uh, open the image, 
you can add package, modify scripts, and things like that. Uh, you can put all the things you need for sensors, for example, in, in the image, so the flasher, the uh, binary images for, the, for the, the sensors and things like that, the control scripts, and everything should work out of the box. And you can share this easily on Docker Hub and give a link, a reference, and uh, someone can use it on its, on its own platform. So I already talked about the network boot. Everything in the, is in the image, the kernel, the file system. So actually, we do not use Docker on the Raspberry Pi. Also, it, it works on the, uh, on the more uh, recent versions. What we do is we only use the uh, uh, file system that is in the Docker image on the server. We mount this file system and we expose it to the nodes. And these nodes, they will grab inside this image the kernel that they need, and they will mount this image to run on top of this uh, file system. So it's self-contained uh, uh, image with everything that you need to run on a Raspberry Pi. So what you get from the, the platform uh, actually is so full remote control over the node, so you can reboot, you can have remote shell session, remote shell session if you want to change things in life, just to test, okay? But obviously if you want something that is uh, <coughs> uh, really stable, you, you modify the image. Uh, for real, not uh, at runtime. Uh, easy to deploy OS images. You can have different images on different nodes, so they can have different functionalities in the network. Uh, easy management of OS images. We, we rely on Docker Hub, so it's easy to clone, modify, publish uh, these images to share them. We also have a log management, so uh, there's a system where we timestamp logs on the on the nodes, we collect them, we store them, and then uh, we can query them or uh, look at them in, in real time. Uh, so that's uh, uh, interesting to uh, see what, ha what happens in the network and to have a, a, a full order of the events that are happening in the network. So we use PTP to have a very uh, uh, tight synchronization. So <coughs> uh, this could be uh, even uh, uh, better, I think, but it's... Uh, way enough for what we do in, uh, with, Ansa, with uh, Sansa Networks, IoT, because the, the, the timings are uh, quite uh, uh, large, actually, uh, with regard to the PTP uh, precisions. And uh, we have something that makes all the thing uh, run easily, is that it's automated discovery of the platform topology. So you just hook everything on the platform, and when you start the server, everything is set up on its own. You do not have to go and, uh, you know, like uh, configure VLANs and things like that. You just plug every cable, run the thing, and it should auto-configure, and you should be able to run something in like 10 minutes. So just to show you visual quickly, so that's <coughs> a representation of what happens in the network. So. Uh, obviously, we don't have the position of the nodes, or here, we, we either we position them with specific commands because we know where they are, or we can move them on the, on the graph. But here you can see that there are transmissions going on. Here you can see all the things that are happening, and here you have a, a timeline. So you can go back in time and check what happened during your experiment in real time. Uh, that's when uh, using Kuja and Kontiki, but if you output the same kind of log that we expect from this tool from something else, for example, even OpenWSN, uh, which is another OS instead of Contiki or uh, any kind of other OS, you can feed the log inside this, they will be interpreted and you will see the same uh, graphical representation. So this is a real help to uh, debug because you can see beacons, you can see if nodes are synchronized, you can see when packets are missed and things like that. So how do we reproduce uh, experiments easily? Well, it's cheap, so it's uh, easy to buy things and, and rebuild this kind of uh, uh, setup. So it's less than uh, 1,000 euros for the setup we'll have to, we will have tomorrow. So a uh, server is just a regular PC, but you can, we have a NUC. Uh, we need like six uh, Raspberry Pi. We need a small switch, which is 120 euros, manageable switch with power over Ethernet. So it's uh, uh, less than 1,000 1, euros, so uh, it's not that very expensive if you have to buy that on the project, for example. 
it's easy to set up and maintain because in a few minutes you can set up everything and you don't really have uh, uh, maintenance uh, to, to do on the nodes because everything is controlled remotely. And you can run existing experiments in a snap. It's just like clone the image from the, the Docker Hub and if you have, of course, obviously the hardware that you need, if you have an experiment that runs on the sensors, you need to have the sensors, okay. But if everything is set up correctly uh, at the physical level, you just run the experiment in the snap. So what's the future work? We want to support more hardware because we also use these nodes, as I said, for uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, experimentation, for example, and things like that. So if we want APs, uh, access points, Wi-Fi access points, we need a bit more powerful uh, uh, computers. We also have uh, uh, another project, which is a kind of uh, <coughs> small data center based on a, a single board computer, uh, which is not strictly limited to network, but we, we, we would like to support that. Uh, we are working on fully packaged experiments because if you have an experiment that needs several images, uh, you have to grab the several images. So what we would like to have is a, a really a fully packaged experiments. You get the experiments, you have all the OS images that you need, the control scripts and things like that, and you don't have to uh, like, uh, read the, the how to grab this, grab this, do that, that it would be fully automated. We also would like to be compatible with FIT IoT Lab experiments because we do a lot of experiments there. So the idea would be to run the same scripts that we, rub, we run on uh, uh, FIT IoT Lab on the platform we have at the lab to compare the results, for example, with different kind of uh, sensor nodes. So obviously we do not run the same nodes, but with the same software. And also anything you would like to do, because it's free and open specification, it's free and open software, you can get everything from the website, uh, worldforge.imac.fr, and you have all the information here. So thank you. <laughs>